for all those people waiting for the market to crash so that they can get the best deal ever or buy up all those foreclosures this time around because this time I'm ready, I am here to tell you it is official. Our prices have come down. We have continually heard about housing recession where our supply would rise, our demand would plummet, and our home prices would fall. But to really understand this, we have to dive deeper into our current housing market to see where we really are. What does our supply and demand look like? How are interest rates affecting our market? Who is being affected by this market? The overall health of our economy? And the big question, how much have home prices really come down? This will help us decide if we are really headed for a housing crash or are we just headed for a slowdown, but not a crash. But make sure you stick around to the end because if you don't know the percentage that our housing prices went down in 2008, I'm gonna tell you that. We've talked about supply and demand a lot on my channel, and it's really the first thing we need to look at. This is going to tell us where our market is currently. You know that if demand rises and supply goes down, the prices go up. Where if supply goes up and demand goes down, prices go down. And for the past two years, we have had an incredible lack of supply and a massive demand, and builders couldn't even keep up. Now, it's no secret that our inventory has been rising over the past few months and pretty significantly. And when it first started, this was a very welcome sign to buyers. They had more to choose from, but our interest rates were still low. It wasn't until our interest rates really started to rise that we started to see our demand fall. And it wasn't until our interest rates hit four and a half percent in March that buyers really stepped to the sidelines to say, we're waiting. Then interest rates kept climbing and more and more buyers stepped to the sidelines to just wait. So our demand continued to fall. At the same time, our inventory was rising rapidly. We had multiple months where we had well over a thousand new active listings come to the market. This was the first thing that pushed our market out of the craziness that we had been in. Now in August, when we saw our interest rates dip just below 5%, we saw our accepted contracts jump by 25%. So what does this tell us? We know demand is out there. People were waiting, they were watching, and when they saw that, they took advantage of that dip in the interest rate and got back in the market. So overall, our demand right now is suppressed due to our interest rates. Now, because of how much our home prices have gone up, affordability has been a concern for many. Then couple that with our rising interest rates and it makes affordability that much more challenging. This pushes buyers further onto the sidelines, just waiting to see what's gonna happen. The interest rates in our market have caused a lot of volatility. Now, at the end of September, we will wait to see what the feds do to raise the federal fund rate. And there's a big debate. Will it be 50 basis points or 75 basis points? But the big thing to remember here is that the federal funds rate is not directly correlated to mortgage interest rates. In fact, the last 75 point basis hike rate actually decreased our mortgage interest rates. When we talk about interest rates rising, and costing people more money to buy a home, we also have to talk about inflation because all things are getting more expensive. And this plays a role in what people can afford. Now, everyone needs a place to live. And as inflation and home prices have risen, so have rent prices. Overall consumer sentiment is low because people just are unsure of the direction we're headed. So who is being affected most in this market? Well, it's the iBuyers, the flip investors, and the landlords. Why? Well, iBuyers got caught up in buying homes above market value for a longer period of time than most. Open Door and OfferPad just pulled back on their acquisitions in July. Before that, they were full steam ahead. Their business model of buying homes, doing minimal to them to turn around, put them on the market for a huge profit, well, that margin is dwindling. So much so that their acquisition to sales price profit was less than $3,000. In other words, these iBuyers are losing money and every week they're lowering their prices. Now, we have also talked about the number of list price reductions and how they have spiked. I can't help but believe that with the number of homes that these iBuyers own and are currently on the market and the rate at which they are reducing their prices has a direct correlation to the spike. So my belief is the actual number of list price reductions is lower. I'm not saying it's not happening but I believe it is a huge contributing factor to that spike. Now the flip investors are also being impacted. Why? Well, they're buying a home to remodel it and flip it for a profit. 
And as we get into a balanced market, like we are right now, this gets more and more challenging. They don't have the same margins. Now, unlike iBuyers that are always using cash, these flip investors are oftentimes getting loans. Sometimes they are getting hard money loans. So the longer they hold this property, the more it eats into their profit. So when they're done with the house, they need this house to sell and sell quickly. And landlords, they are seeing a huge spike in competition for rentals. Now, rental prices are still high, but this is putting downward pressure on their pricing and they are no longer getting list price or more. In fact, about 50% of the rental properties actually leased for less than the listed lease amount. For renters, this probably sounds great because like I said, rental prices have increased like home prices, making them unaffordable too. However, you have to take into account inflation. Now, I know some people got hit with a $600, $700 a month increase in their rent, which is excessive, but you have to take into account the inflation and how that is affecting the owner and landlord. Everything is more expensive and they have to factor that into their balance sheet. So how much have prices really come down? Well, from the peak of our market, which was May, we have seen our median home sales price drop by 6.7%. That is less than 2% each month. However, we are still seeing our overall year over year price appreciation increase. This is where it gets confusing. The long and short of it is that since May, home prices have come down about 2% each month. So if you purchased a home prior to February of 2022, you still have equity in your home. So for everyone that now is thinking, okay, that I am going to time the market. I'm going to get it just right this time. It is not a matter of timing the market. It is a matter of timing in the market. Will home prices continue to go down? No one really knows. A few good signs is that the number of homes coming on the market has started to flatten. As well, our demand has increased. I don't think these two things are really getting people to jump off the fence and get ready to buy, but I do think people are sitting in the wings, waiting and watching. Now, a few good pieces of news is that Arizona's hourly wage did just increase by 7%. Now, that's not gonna make home affordability just go away, but at least it's headed in the right direction. Arizona also has a lot of really great jobs and new jobs coming to the Valley. Now, this is something we did not have in 2008. We did not have a diversified job market. We also still have much less inventory on the market than we did in 2007 and 2008. And although the builders do have homes that they have already started that they need to sell, the number of permits that they have pulled from March to July has dropped by 49%. And as you can see, the number of permits that they have pulled this year is less than half of the number of permits that they pulled year after year after year in the run up to the 2007, 2008 market crash. For these reasons, I don't see us heading into a market crash, not like 2008. Our lending is stricter and buyers have more equity in their homes with locked low interest rates. There's no question that we are seeing a slowdown in our market right now. And I do think that is gonna continue until we figure out a little bit more where our market is headed. For those waiting for foreclosures, the one thing that could affect this the most drastically is job loss. And we just don't see that coming. Could it change? Of course. But right now, our unemployment is actually lower than the national average here in Arizona. Another reason I don't see us headed for a crash like 2008 is because in 2008, our housing prices declined by 55%. That's more than half. The numbers just don't support this type of drop. I even asked you in my community what you guys thought. And the majority of you at the time of this recording thought prices would drop by about 25%. Is it going to be a bumpy ride? Yes. Is it the worst time ever to buy a home? No. In fact, we are heading into the best time of year to buy a home in any market. The end of the year, fourth quarter, sellers that have had their home on the market really wanna get this done before the end of the year. And in this current market, Buyers have a lot of negotiating power. Is buying or selling right for everyone right now? No. This is when you really have to sit down, make a pros and cons list and create a plan. If you want to see if you should buy now or wait, take a look at this video right here. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.